Simply put, water takes the path of least resistance. Water cannot find its way to a storm drain catch basin through turf grass and soil. We're gonna dig out a bunch of soil. We're gonna haul all the dirt away. We're gonna fill that trench full of stone and we're gonna put in some corrugated perforated pipe. We're gonna create a path where the water can travel. There's gonna be less resistance. Water's getting trapped between the two houses here. So we're going in between the two homes in the low point between two homes. You can see just how wet. Look at that. Just can't even mow this lawn. Can't maintain it. Got to weed whip it. And then across the backyard, it just gets worse. This is a familiar sight to a lot of homeowners. We're going to dig out all the soil. We're going to replace it with pipe and stone. There's a sleeve on the storm drain. You can see it right there. The men dug down to the sleeve. That's where we'll tie our system. The soil is denser than the water. Soil dams water. It's really, really hard to get water to flow in most soils. We're gonna create a big pocket of air. If you can, you know, just kind of picture a ditch underground. That's what we're building. Air is 830 times less dense than water. Think about that. So the water's just gonna fall to the bottom of this underground trench that we're building. We contribute the majority of our success with our French drains based on the fact that we don't put any of the dirt back in. All the French drains that we replace are French drains that contractors put in with typically a very narrow trencher and then they push the dirt back in on the pipe. These drains all fail. They don't stand the test of time. We subscribe to the belief that you have to haul all this dirt away to have a really good French drain. But because we haul all the dirt away and we fill the entire trench with stone and pipe, we actually have a lot of success in grabbing up the surface water as well as the subsurface water. There's absolutely no question in our mind that you're gonna have a better French drain if you haul the dirt away. Dirt is so dense it just dams water. Dirt is so dense it's just so hard for water to move through dirt. Air is 830 times less dense than water. So when we have these pipes that are basically this void we have this opening inside the ground. Air being 830 times less dense than water, the water is gonna flow. It takes the path of least resistance. We're gonna dig out a bunch of heavy soil. We're gonna haul it all away. We're gonna fill that trench with perforated corrugated pipe and stone. Water can't find its way through turf grass and soil. There's too much resistance there. It's not gonna drain through turf grass and soil. If you don't use a non-woven geotextile filter fabric, to create a soil filter zone for your French drain, you give it an expiration date at the time of install. The dirt is gonna migrate into the stone and into the perforated pipe, and it's gonna clog the French drain. A good soil filter zone is going to extend the life of your French drain by decades and decades. I can't emphasize this enough. It's a five foot piece of four ounce non-woven geotextile filter fabric, and it's been double punched. It has a bunch of holes in it. 
if you look really close at it in manufacturing there was a lot of tiny little holes put in this fabric this is to up its flow rate this fabric was purpose-built for drainage so many landscapers just grab what they you know coin a landscape fabric you know it's like an all-purpose fabric for landscape they're using it for weed barrier they're using it for drainage and then they wonder why they're having poor results it's because they're not using a purpose-built fabric just for drainage but if you make the wrong choice in fabric and it's easy to do all your hard work could be for nothing so I can't emphasize that enough how important it is to make sure you're using the right fabric for the job. The purpose for this non-woven geotextile filter fabric is so that you can create a soil filter zone between your French drain system and the existing soil that's saturated in the yard. You don't want the soil to migrate into your stone, into your perforated pipe, then you're no longer gonna have a French drain system that really is efficient and really moves a lot of water. It's really important to have a non-woven geotextile filter fabric. I can't emphasize that enough. It's one of the biggest mistakes I see contractors making and homeowners, not using the right fabric and not subscribing to the belief that a soil filter zone is in their best interest. This drain is gonna work 24 hours a day. It's gonna be on the job working 365 days a year. A French drain system doesn't take a minute off. It's constantly pulling water from the subsurface. Doing a beautiful job pulling the fabric tight. Have the fabric pulled nice and tight. Pin to both sides of the trench. Getting all the wrinkles out of the fabric, this is key. You have to have the right fabric and then you have to set fabric up to succeed. It's really easy to set up fabric to fail. A lot of contractors have a bad experience with fabric because they install it improperly or they're using the wrong fabric. Then they end up subscribing to a no filter zone, no soil filter zone, which is a bad thing. If you don't have a soil filter zone, you give your French drain an expiration date at the time of install. It's pretty easy to tell that you're going to be able to draw some of the surface water in a French drain. When you dig out a channel like this, you can just see the water dripping out of the sod. A saturated yard, a saturated lawn will dry out so quick with a French drain system. We haul away all the dirt. Everything we dig out, we haul away. It's going to defeat the purpose to put the dirt right back in. All this work, this is the hardest part of the job is excavating the dirt and you're going to put it back in it's just going to clog your french drain system we cut the sod out really thick we make sure there's a lot of dirt so that there's a lot of root on the turf grass so that it'll survive over top of the french drain we're set up to haul out 30 yards of topsoil with our big gooseneck trailers and our dump trucks and I think this is why most of the guys that are not hauling it out, I think this is the one thing that discourages that, you know, if they just have a, I say a service truck, maybe a van with a utility trailer, they're so handicapped that they have to preach and they have to subscribe to a completely different program. They want to put the dirt back in. The men did a beautiful job excavating this trench. Massive ditch between these two homes. This is going to catch all this bulk water. This is going to direct all this bulk water. The bottom of this trench is just filling up. You got water pouring out of the turf grass from the surface. You got water pouring out of the sidewall. You know, just look at how it's filling. 
the bottom of the French drain trench. This is a beautiful installation of the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. It's pulled nice and tight. It's pinned back so that when they're filling it with perforated pipe and stone, it can't end up bunched. You don't want wrinkles in your non-woven geotextile filter fabric. You want it pulled nice and tight. We also want to move the water efficiently, so we designed a French drain that is straight from the storm drain right through the backyard, up the side of the house. It's a nice straight French drain system. Very efficient. We're going to put all the roof runoff system water, we're going to have it all piped to where it's going to be coming out of a pop-up emitter right over top of the French drain system. We're going to be moving a lot of water through this system. We're going to put two four inch pipes on the bottom. We're using an eight slot pipe. It's the pipe that has the most inlet. It has eight slots, 360 degrees, all the way around the pipe. It has holes on the bottom, on the sides, and on the top. It takes in water from the bottom and the sides and the top. When the trench floods with water, this pipe has more inlet than any other pipe in the world. Also lets air travel through the system, which is great. If tree roots ever find their way into the system, it'll air prune them off. All right, we're running two four inch pipes at the bottom of the trench. You build a better French drain when you hold yourself to a tolerance of two four inch pipes. A single pipe French drain is not enough in yard drainage. It has its limitations and it fails. If you dig out enough dirt to fit two four inch pipes, you're gonna have a much better French drain. You're gonna have a French drain that's gonna last you a lifetime. We have water coming up through the fabric in the bottom of the trench. We're going to get our perforated corrugated pipe installed, put stone around that. We're then going to wrap this fabric around the entire system so that it's encapsulated. We don't have to worry about contamination finding its way into our French drain system. And then we're going to put the sod right back over top of the fabric. Anytime you lose an underground buried downspout line, just run a blower in it. The grass grew over the discharge end of this underground buried downspout. Juan just blew a blower through it. You can see all the leaves that were inside it because this did not have a downspout leaf filter. That's what ends up clogging lines. You have the grass grow over the discharge end. You have debris that can't find its way out. This for sure was causing water to pour over the gutter trough right along the foundation of this home, causing dampness, moisture, the smell of mildew in the basement. So we have a lot of trees in the wetland area. It's a forest. There's some oak trees in there. There's some trees that really have a root structure that can make it 50 to even 75 feet. We want to make sure that we build this to where there's so much air that the trees cannot live in it. The roots would just dry up and become dust in the wind. We like to build a system that moves a lot of air. We have two four inch pipes on the bottom. We're going to have three three inch perforated pipes on top. This pipe has perforations throughout.
So we use a non-recycled material end cap. We snap it in. That's how we start our French drains right there. That way you're not filling up the pipe with stone. Then when you have to connect two 100 foot rolls together, you wanna to use an external. Try to always use external couplers, connect it from the outside, not the inside. Then you don't have an obstruction inside the pipe. Got two four inch pipes on the bottom. We're gonna put three three inch perforated corrugated pipes on top. If you buy 36 inch heavy duty zip ties, you can pull two four inch pipes on the bottom and three three inch corrugated perforated pipes on the top together. Pulls them nice and, and organized. Helps hold them together. So now you can dump the stone in and all your pipe stays in place. So protect yourself from tree roots. To protect yourself from tree roots, you have to have a lot of pipe in the ground. You really need to create a lot of void. Whether you do it through big rocks and a couple of pipes in the bottom, or in this case, instead of trying to haul a ridiculous amount of big rocks back here, we're gonna use three perforated corrugated pipes on top to create all that air to protect us from the tree roots. All right, we have a downspout. We're gonna put the pop-up right in the beginning of the French drain. We got end caps on all the pipe. That's how we start a French drain. Got the two four-inch pipes on the bottom. We got three perforated corrugated pipes on top. We have a total of five pipes in the trench. This right here gives us the perfect height. It fills the trench, creates the most void. You know, again, we're protecting ourselves from this woods, this wetlands. We have all these big shade trees and their root system can make it 50 feet out. We don't want this system to be taken out by these big trees. We got some really big shade trees. Some of these oak trees, they have no problem. They have no problem getting in this French drain system. They can make it 50 feet easy from the uh, trunk. The guys pulled this nice and tight. They're gonna dump the stone on top of this. The stone's gonna fill around this French drain system. They did a beautiful job. We have so many layers of defense. First, we have our non-woven geotextile filter fabric is double punched. It's gonna help protect against roots. It's not a root barrier, and I don't wanna advertise it as such, but it does discourage roots. The roots seem to hit this fabric. The tree roots seem to kind of grow along it because when we dig up old systems that we install, to add a branch off of it. That's what we see. So I'm, I'm sharing with you what I see in the real world. This isn't like my opinion or my spin on it. It's what I see. So our first line of defense is the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. Our second offense is having two four inch pipes on the bottom. We're creating more airspace. It's easy for our tree to root up next to one single four inch pipe that has a bunch of stone around it and it can stay damp there, and that root can thrive and survive and fill that pipe and plug that pipe. So we have two four inch pipes on the bottom. We have three corrugated perforated pipes on top. We have more air, we have more void. Any tree roots that possibly could penetrate this system, during our drought season, which here in the north where we're at, 
our drought season is June 15th to September 15th. Any roots that made it into the system, they just become dust in the wind. They just dry out because there's nothing here but just a big pocket of air. This is the best French drain that you can build a client. The stone's gonna spill around the corrugated perforated pipe. We're gonna have a nice soil filter zone between the pipe and the existing subsoil. It's really hard to improve on a French drain built like this. This has thrown everything at it. We got our pop-up right next to our French drain. Put your pop-up right next to your French drain. In the beginning, you could drop a roof runoff system pop-up like we did, right in front of the French drain. We started it with the pop-up, and then we went right into our French drain system. We're gonna grab up all the water. We went ahead and we tied all the downspouts into a, a really good roof runoff system. When you end your pop-up right at your French drain, the water is going to come out right at this pop-up. You can see the guys put fabric under the pop-up. They're going to pour stone on the French drain, and they're going to pour stone underneath that pop-up. We have our pop-up emitter to start out our system. Then we go right into our French drain. We're gonna be able to grow grass on this, no problem. The grass is gonna root through the double-punched, non-woven geotextile filter fabric. And then it's gonna root down into the stone at the surface. This is a beautiful job. We brought 100 foot rolls of corrugated pipe in. So you're looking at 100 feet of pipe. Once we get up here, we do have some external couplers to extend it. This drain was 130 feet of French drain in total. You can see the external couplers connecting the pipe. We're using all external couplers anymore. We don't use any internal. You can see how the stone packs all the tubing together. We have stone going alongside the pipe. This strengthens the system. It holds the system together. That's a really good cutaway of what it looks like. That's what you're trying to build. That's the goal. Fill the trench with tubing. It's gonna create more void than a giant ditch full of stone. You're not gonna be able to grow roots in it.
Beautiful work. You guys are putting stone around and underneath the pop-up emitter and the pop-up emitter is on the other side of the French drain fabric. Beautiful job locking all this tubing together. Perfect, perfect. This gives you a really solid French drain. Tightens it right up. Makes it really strong. You can drive lawnmowers over it. Big heavy lawnmowers, commercial mowers. See how the stone goes down the side between the tubing and the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. The guys, they work the stone in, they pack it in. I mean, stone compacts quickly. You level it out, it's compacted. We hauled all the dirt away. We're not putting any of the dirt back in. I can't put enough emphasis on that. These houses have automatic sprinklers. We cut the turf grass out with a ton of what right now is mud, but you know it's root and dirt on the back of the sod. So the turf grass won't have no problem growing on this French drain system. So our French drain Look at how well this French drain is working. That is just mind blowing that that steady stream of water is just coming out of the subsurface soil. The grass was, was soggy. The grass was definitely soggy. We had some drenched turf grass and it was just dripping out of it. Here we got like 130 feet of French drain and we got water just already running into the storm drain. I see people take these French drain systems and they take it to a pop-up right in front of the storm drain. And they're asking it to define gravity and come up out of the pop-up into this storm drain through the top, through the grate. It's never a good idea. You wanna go down, dig down, and enter a couple of feet below the surface for best results. It's like pulling the plug out of a bathtub. It just empties. Same concept. Guys are doing a beautiful job. Really nice job. Let me show you what this looks like. The men trimmed the fabric so that we didn't have a heavy overlap. We just have a couple inches of overlap. They're trimming the fabric. They're pinning it. And they're putting the sod over top of it. This is a fully contained French drain system. There's no way any contaminants can get in it. It's wrapped with non-woven geotextile filter fabric that's been double punched. We protected this French drain system from any chance of contamination. You're not going to get infiltration of the existing subsoils into the pipe, the corrugated perforated pipe, or the stone. Look how beautiful this came out. 
hard to believe. Look at that. As soggy, as wet, as muddy, as everything is. What a beautiful job. What a talent. Tell by how muddy that pop-up is that was brand new and just installed. We're dealing with just mud. The sod is completely mud. The guys did a beautiful job trimming up the fabric, all the heavy overlap they cut off. Now down here, the French drain got so deep, we actually put even more pipe in than we did upstream. So we had two four inch pipes, the full length of this French drain system. And then down here, we had six three inch pipes. Two stacks, three inch across, you know? So a lot of perforated corrugated pipe went into this system. We built a better French drain system that's gonna combat all these trees and all the tree roots. We tightened it up with the stone on top. Big lawnmowers can run over it. It's gonna be sound, it's gonna be stable. We're gonna improve these backyards going to tighten them right up. Homeowners are going to get their yard back. If you found any of this information helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. If you have any questions regarding French drains, leave them in the comments section. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until the next video.